I believe it was the InSync prophet himself, Justin Timberlake, saying, It's gonna be May. Hello, everyone. Welcome to May. It's Ralph from the South. You know who it is, the host that does the most. And I'm happy today to actually be doing an interview with one of my good old friends, pulling in house today from the University of Minnesota. This is my wonderful friend and woman of science, Baram Asawi, a fifth year PhD candidate in the University of Minnesota's pharmacology program. So as I say before, when it comes to these interviews, bear in mind that we are in a state where we're doing this virtually. So therefore, when it comes to this type of stuff, if there's any weird sounds that come through, any feedback that may be cut in and cut out, bear with it and have fun with this interview. I think it's going to be a wonderful time. So get ready for another episode of Scientifically Sound. Clap your hands, everybody, if you got what it takes. And I'm Curtis Blow, and I want you to know that... We are the brakes. Yay! We got it! <laughs> oh my God, who is this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh, who is singing so cool? Yeah. yeah. What we got? We got science. What? We got music. Put them together, let's use it. Wait, 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 wait. Let me be the substrate in your ear receptors. And let this not just be one endeavor. Yeah, yeah, I get crunk on the science. Yeah, I pull the lever. And with the music, I just hope you say, dang it, clever. Whatever, bring it. Master what matters all the while. My life is scattered. You surge on in general. I guess you're David Satcher. And you bet I got you when it comes down to the laughter. And whatever may come after. Scientifically sound so profound. Listen to this while you're making some hash browns Or maybe later after you breaking some cash mounds Who am I? It's Ralph from the South Who raps out his mouth And we bring the music to the science that's around And that's on period And I just thank you for hearing this Scientific sound Oh my god, I'm so excited I'm so excited Are you ready? I'm ready <laughs> Alright, let's do this Friends Romans, people that use their pipette box left to right versus up and down. I don't know who you are, but y'all are weird. But I am Ralph from the South. I'm the host that does the most. And I ate toast today. You thought I was going to say the other thing, but it doesn't matter. Welcome to Scientifically Sound. Today is a wonderful day, everyone. I have this wonderful woman of science for you and it's going to be so fun because she's always nervous but she really is a real one when it comes to science i'm gonna tell you a story she's actually a jerk but i still love her as is um when i first started in grad school 2017 i was a young boy young warthog as our pi would say um i was rotating and i was all set to join that particular lab and she appeared from nowhere Plus, she threw a pipette in my mouth when I was on the floor. <laughs> Give it up for the person that says broccoli is better than Brussels sprouts. Give it up for the person that is an advocate for Beyonce over Taylor Swift. Give it up for probably an Adidas model at this point. Like, she wears Adidas all the time in lab, but we're going to yeah. leave that. <laughs> you should see I her face, it. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for my wonderful friend, Marama Sally. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Hey, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? You know, I'm kind of chill right now. And that's no pun towards the winter weather that we're dealing with. I know it's spring, yeah. but it's a fake spring. It's a faux spring if this was like a clothing line. But I'm happy. I'm well, you know, we're getting into the summer part of things, I bet, soon. I hope. The Very sun. Soon. And it's you know what that really means. What? It's going to be really warm next week on Monday. I'm so ready. But you know what I'm excited for? What? Lunch outside? That, but also when summer hits, all the undergrads go away. <laughs> Oh, God, yeah. Oh, my God, that's going to be amazing. I'm so ready for them to be <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Now, the I number of undergrads that I walk past that have their mask pulled down is just, like, why? Like, just pull it up. It's not, like... 
Oh, I'm not gonna get you started on your uh, COVID uh, stuff. <laughs> in the student union, in the student union, you'd walk around and they're just like they're not even eating; they're just on their laptop and they just can't handle keeping their mask on their face. Like, why is this so hard? It's craziness. Now I introduced you, but only you can introduce yourself as you want. So tell us about yourself, who you are, who you rep. Go right ahead, Maram. Okay, well, I'll start by saying you made a comment about people that pipette, that use the pipette tip box from left to right, and that is me, sometimes. Yesterday, the last pipette tip box I used was from left to right, but backing up, <laughs> I'm Maram. <laughs> I just needed to make a comment on that because it stuck out at me when you said that. I'm Maram. I, um... <laughs> <laughs> She's super giggly, everyone. <laughs> Someone get her. Someone get your mans. Get your mans. She'll always say that somehow. Go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> you're going to cut all of this out. <laughs> I'm not cutting it out. I'm keeping it. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I'm Ram. I am a fifth year graduate student at the University of Minnesota in pharmacology, just like you. We're all in the pharmacology program. Um, I live in Lakeville, Minnesota. I've lived in Lakeville since I was 10. I, um, I've been here since fourth grade, so I'd like to think that I grew up here. But before um, Minnesota, I lived in Georgia and Tennessee. Um, so we have Georgia in our past in common. Um, but I can't mention where I grew up without saying that I um, originally am Egyptian. My family's from Egypt. They came here when they got married, and my brothers and I were born here, so we're all first generation Americans, but our roots are Egyptian. And that's me. I love that <laughs> a lot. So, first off, everyone, she reps from Egypt to Georgia to Tennessee to here, and yet she never has left Minnesota, though she really loves the heat. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't like winter. So. She's an anomaly. I don't know why she's still here, but you know, Ooh, it's okay. <laughs> We're glad you're here though. Yeah. So tell us what made you get into science? What made you want to do pharmacology? How, when am I going to have to call you Dr. Asawi? All the things. Alrighty. Well, what made me get into science? I did take um, a lot of science classes in high school. Um, but actually my two favorite courses or like like classes were um, science and history and I love them both a lot and the reason I like both science and history is because they help us ex understand the world around us. With science you understand your own body and why the things that, that happen in your body happen and how things in your body go wrong and how you can therapeutically intervene to fix things that go wrong in your body and history is the same but like on the large scale with the whole world you get to understand why the world is the way it is and what things happened over time to lead to the situation we're in right now and of course you also use history to learn about um, what's happening now and what you can use history to learn about what may happen in the future so it's just a, this general understanding of like the world and our place in it and how things are and how they work and so going into college I actually had no idea which one I was going to major in I couldn't decide between biology world and history world until I was scrolling through the classes list and I saw this intro to biochem class and I was like why not sign up for it I signed up for it and I really 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 loved biochem and it was so fascinating to me. And so I decided I'm going to major in biochem. And that was the end of history world for me. And I moved on <laughs> with biochem. Um, I loved biochem for all of undergrad. Um, but by the time I joined a biochem lab for research, I started realizing about, I started realizing that biochem was it, it can, biochem can be a lot of things, but the lab that I was in was a lot more structural and I didn't want to really be in structure world. I like more pathways and signal transduction and um, yeah, so I didn't really want to stay in structure world so much. So I started thinking about other worlds of biology and the pharmacology program was introduced to me and it pharmacology basically is what I 
The basis of pharmacology is what I loved about my intro to biochem class, where we learned about like the, the pathways and like the underlying biology of our bodies and of certain. Um, and so pharmacology is one step further besides just understanding the system. You start, you are also learning and thinking of ways to therapeutically intervene. And that was the next step past biochemistry. This chem biochemistry classes or the biochemistry introduction that I had, that was the next step that I really enjoyed. And that's what I wanted to go into. And that's how I ended up in the pharmacology program. How lovely. I, I still I like history. Oh, we know. You're very knowledgeable <laughs> about different histories, especially as of late with uh, disease and a certain pandemic that's around but oh, of yeah. course since you brought it up since you go from left to right in the pipette box we have to know what kind of vibe are you on this week what were you playing in lab what were you thinking about what was in your head the entire time okay this whole week flew by like two and a half days it was a crazy rush of a week i was doing a lot in the lab and the way the vibe is exactly like either a drum roll that's just getting faster 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 louder 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 or like the part in a song leading up to like the beat drop where again it's getting faster 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 louder 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 this whole week has just been like like that <laughs> i'm so glad you did this ah! <laughs> Uh, wait, so it's just getting, it literally looks like drumline tests where they're just like, got you, got you, got you. But there hasn't been a beat drop. There hasn't been like this big event. It's just been that anticipation and that like the excitement and nervousness all leading to something. And I don't know what that something is just yet, but that has been the vibe this week is just increasing intensity. What's going on in the lab? Why is it increased intensity? A lot is going on in the lab. I'm just doing a lot of experiments right now. But when I'm, when are we not? <laughs> You're not wrong. I mean, I mean, credit. I mess up experiments sometimes. So like, there's a negative part of that, but also that the drum roll for me is slowing down because of failure. But that's okay. Well, I almost failed on Tuesday. I was purifying protein, and I got to the resin part, the chromatography part. And I found out that I've been using cobalt resin for this purification ever since I joined the lab. And I found out we're out of cobalt and we have nickel resin. So I had to figure out how I'm going to use nickel resin. Then I had to make all new buffers for everything. And that was probably the beginning of the drum rolls. Like, make all the buffers, make all the buffers, make all the buffers, get the pH right, use the nickel resin. And it was just, it just didn't stop after that. It just kept getting more, and more intense. When in doubt, everyone, order everything ahead of time. Just make sure you have everything set beforehand. And that actually should be our inspiration yeah, for today. Only because, okay, everyone, during this pandemic, it is very hard for laboratories to get what they want in a necessary amount of time. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have to order ahead. And so for all of you out there, it's like getting groceries. So like if your mom comes in and looks in the fridge and be like, hey, milk is halfway out. I'm gonna go and buy milk like ahead of time versus just like waiting till the very end when your milk is almost gone. It's like, ah, shoot, I gotta get more. And then they're out of milk at the freaking uh, grocery store. You're freaking out, it's like, oh my gosh, what am I doing with my cereal and oatmeal? For us, instead of milk, okay. it's gloves and pipette tips. So understand and that, I think, always be proactive of things that you use every day. But nevertheless, with all the things that you're doing in the pharmacology department and, of course, research, what are the future goals that you have, whether it's short term, it can be as short as like tomorrow, or it can be uh, as far ahead in terms of long term as like five, 10 years from now. Who knows? Maybe you meet Beyonce okay. during that time. Oh, I would love to meet Beyonce. I haven't met anyone famous yet. Fun fact. I'm still waiting for the day that I'm going to meet someone famous, but. I don't know if that's a goal for me. That could be a goal. <laughs> that's nice totally a goal. <laughs> nice. um, my current goal that I'm obsessed with is graduating. I want to graduate this year. Um, in order to graduate, well, before I graduate, it would be really, really nice if I also published a paper or two or more, but who knows? Um, I really would like to graduate. Um, 
y'all hear her? I really department? want the pandemic to end. Sorry, what? I was like, you hear that department? She She's putting her heart out on the line. I want to graduate. <laughs> Let me graduate. Well, Colin actually just emailed me this morning at like seven in the morning asking me um, about my anticipated graduation date. So like, he's like also, it must be on his mind too. Maybe like the obsession in my head somehow like went to his head. And everyone, Colin is her advisor, by the way. But that's hilarious. Also that he emails you that early in the morning. I would love if my PI would just be like, hey, 6.30 a.m. while I'm drinking my coffee. You want to graduate? Like when? (laughs) Uh, Now, please? (laughs) (laughs) You like to be out ASAP. Um, No, not ASAP. I want to be a sec. I want to be. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to have a happy journey to the end of my thesis and to the end of my graduation. And what do you want to do after? I'm messing up on my own. After that, well, by then the pandemic's going to be end, so I'm going to be ended, hopefully. And so I would really like to take a really nice long trip to Egypt. I do. Um, and then I want to work and I want to continue to do exciting and fun science. Um, I like bench work, so I want to stay in bench work world. I don't want to leave the bench. Um, I don't know about academia versus not academia, but I want to be happy. And part of being happy involves a nice work-life balance. And that's important for my future. Wow, that Um, whole transition just, I don't don't know if I'm going to do academia, industry. You know what really matters? Work-life balance. Hold up. When did we have to get to that part? I basically made my decision right there. I can, I'm open to anything, but I want to be happy. So, I think that is the most important thing, to be happy. What's the use of having all that money or having all this fun stuff happening around you if you're not happy? It's, yeah, or doing groundbreaking science if you're also like not doing anything else to bring you to it. Right. And with that, I think that definitely needs to be another lesson. So besides ordering ahead of being proactive, you must find something that is happy to you. Do not do yes. anything that is great, like for popularity or for fame or whatever, but you're not enjoying it. It's literally, yeah. I think it's absolutely necessary. And a lot of people go into this world thinking that. And, you know, I will do it because I'm doing groundbreaking research, but I'm sad. And not because yeah. my cells got infected with something, you know. But that's another story for another time. Um, With that, how about we take a break and we'll be back. Okay, we take a break. Hello, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the episode with Marama Sawi to talk about our lives and scientific endeavors. The song for the sound for this episode is coming into a new generation of artists. So a lot of the time I like to throw things back, but you can't just forget that there are some new people or wonderful artists that are breaking ground right now. So I want you to listen to Green by the artist Kaina. This is off of her record, actually her debut album called Next to the Sun. We're headed to Chicago. She's a pop, she's soul, she's R&B. And she brings in her roots, having Guatemalan and Venezuelan roots, actually, all tied together in one album. It's a beautiful piece of music that I think that everyone would enjoy, especially as we're getting to the summer months. So check that out and let's get back to the show. Clap your hands, everybody, if you got what it takes. And I'm Curtis Blow and I want you to know that. These are the breaks. Yay, we got it. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Now for everyone out there, today we are talking about the breaks with Curtis Blow. If you know how I am in Scientifically Sound, I typically will give you some history. I want to give you some background, but I'm first going to tell this story because my mom and dad hate I tell this story. I first heard this song when I was about 15 or 16. The reason being is that I was at church. It was the church picnic. And for those who don't know what happens at church picnics, it's just a bunch of old people. There's someone on the barbecue or grilling barbecue with those like Jesus sandals. And he has like a weird shirt or maybe he's wearing, um, a romper, you know, those type of things. There's a big tent and someone's always playing music. But when I heard this song, I immediately was like, 
oh this is way old and out of my generation but way too many church members got up that were probably like 50 and up and they were sidestepping and everything and it's like a seven and a half minute song so the fact that they wasted all that well it's not a waste of energy but it's a very fun song so i decided to go back to the song and listen again and this is one of the big reasons why i brought maram but before i get into that let's give you some new things you need to learn maram so curtis blow self-debut album came out in 1980 so i love the 80s they're so fun that song as well as that particular album became certified gold it was probably one of the first few albums from like rap and hip-hop that even got that type of ranking in addition it introduced the drum break so for some people who don't know what instru instrumentation is it's kind of like you give the drummer some as james brown would say but it's mainly him just doing or her because there are women drummers out there they're just playing riffs and they're playing different patterns here back and forth also curtis blow was the first major like label rapper he got signed and it's kind of awesome because it's like thinking about who gets signed now is like okay here you go but 1980s there wasn't a lot of craziness or support for rap it's only later down the line but now in terms of how it even relates to why maram is here the breaks are things that you know it can be positive or negative but a lot of the song talks about bad things that happen to people and those are the breaks but there's one thing that i did not notice he talked about in terms of the breaks and it's dna breaks and i don't like that because those are the most important breaks wouldn't you agree maram they are they're the most cytotoxic breaks for sure <laughs> Woo! tell them ha ha um but before anything else tell me what was your favorite verse because i sent it to maram you all and maram has never heard such a thing like this so it was always interesting i put her onto this let it now be known forever but i put her onto this song so tell me what song what lyric was interesting to you that stuck out during that song well there's two okay um the first one immediately the one that stuck out at me was the just do it do it just do it just do it just do it just do it Peer just do it and do I, it I think peer pressure is a lot of fun when it's like all lighthearted. so i just really enjoyed that part of the song um, <laughs> but when i actually thought about it a little bit more the part that i liked was this whole second verse where he goes breaks on a bus breaks on a car breaks to make you a superstar breaks to win and breaks to lose and he goes on and on about basically like the way i saw it was just kind of like this two-sidedness of like how breaks can be good and how breaks can be bad and that really is like one of the things that is really exciting to me about DNA breaks and DNA damage in general is that it can be good in one context and it can be bad in another context. And so I felt like in a way he was kind of like, like he literally was singing about DNA breaks, but he wasn't obviously, but he should have, but go into what do you mean by when dna breaks are good or bad and all that but i guess why is our dna breaking first of all you, you gotta give us the 411 on this okay Tell so us. i'll back up we're gonna start with our cells that have dna in them all our cells have dna and dna codes for basically every single thing our cells gonna do big or little um good or bad that's all coded for by our DNA. And so if you want our cells to do the right thing, you need our DNA to be intact and whole and not damaged and not broken. Um, but with time, um, as our bodies expose to different things from the outside world and even from inside of our bodies, our DNA does get damaged and there's different forms of DNA damage, but one of those forms of DNA damage are DNA bricks. And our cell can tolerate small amounts of this kind, small small amounts of this DNA damage, because it can repair it usually. But if it can't repair it, and if this DNA damage accumulates over time, you can then lead, or you can then end up with um, mutations or disease. And one of the main diseases that's associated with accumulated DNA damage is, of course, cancer. So that is a case in which DNA breaks are bad. But if you want to flip it, then you start thinking about how we treat cancer. And one of the oldest, most traditional forms of um, cancer chemotherapy is using DNA damaging drugs to treat cancer. So just like DNA damage or DNA breaks are bad in one context because they can lead to cancer, they, they can give you cancer, you can also use 
these drugs that form a lot of DNA breaks and actually treat cancer. And these kinds of these this type of DNA drugs is actually one of the most again one of the most traditionally used types of DNA damage or types of cancer drugs because they're so effective. And so that's a case in which DNA drink breaks would be good. I said DNA drinks. <laughs> DNA breaks, not drinks. <laughs> Don't tell Drake that he's putting out a new album. <laughs> but wait, so essentially you can use a break to break a break in order to stop the break from hurting us. Essentially. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole breakception that sounds very meta whoever can figure it out on our listeners just let me know if that was correct or not because oh my gosh that sounds awesome so yeah. what i guess in terms of the drugs and of course you said dna could be repaired too like what kind of repair are we talking because i see like you know a wrench being used in my mind and imagination but what are what's in place in our bodies that essentially initiate the repair so that's what our lab is interested in so our lab basically wants to know how our cells repair the dna damage um and we're interested in all forms of dna damage so not just dna breaks but um there's other forms of dna damage that we're interested in as well and what we know so far is that s different kinds of dna damage are repaired by different pathways but some kinds of dna damage share repair pathways with other types of DNA damage. So you can use the easier to study types of DNA damage to learn more about the harder to study ones. Um, DNA breaks um, are cool because there's two pathways that you can think of um, that we know. Um, we have a little bit of evidence, um, a little bit or a lot bit. We have some evidence um, of certain pathways that are used to repair these DNA breaks. Um, so there's a pathway called non-homologous end joining and a pathway called homologous recombination. But that's a lot of science words. Essentially, there's a pathway where you basically jam the two sides of the break together and you just basically smush them back together. So we've got, we've got one end and another end and it's a broken piece of DNA and you just smush the two broken ends together and make it unbroken. Um, that is a very error prone pathway. So a lot of the time you end up with deletions because you're not trying to restore the DNA that was lost in the break. You're just smushing the two ends back together. Then there's homologous recombination, and that's where you use a um, another another DNA strand as a template to copy off of, so that you basically um, copy off the copy the sequence that was broken. Does that make sense? You copy. You use the other DNA strand as a template for repair, and so you're basically um... you're following a guide. It's like it's like a counselor, and the counselor's like, "Okay, you need to do this to be even with me." Yeah. Versus the other one where it's like, take one strand of DNA and the other, and be like, "Now kiss." <laughs> Nothing works. <laughs> oh man. Okay, but here's the real big question. Yeah. So. You said that we take on little bits of damage here and there, and maybe it's a two-part question. So what can actually damage our DNA that's known? Like, I'm pretty sure you, I know UV damage and we, you know, UV damage does things. Like what are other factors that could damage our DNA? And does that mean I need to stay inside every day and just hide and not go outside? <laughs> no, that does not mean that, but you should put on sunscreen before you go outside, which I do not do. Um, as much as I should, but <laughs> that is one way to protect yourself. I actually was thinking of this while I was listening to the song because, oh, I was listening to the song and watching the YouTube video and they're all like laying out by the pool and like exposing themselves to the sun and getting DNA breaks while they were filming the song. But there's endogenous and exogenous forms of DNA damage. So endogenous means from inside of your body and exogenous means from outside of your body. So inside of our body, there's all these chemical reactions that are happening all the time while our body is metabolizing food or making energy. And these reactions um, release, um, release metabolites or release um, different species, chemical species that can cause DNA damage um, so like basically this reaction will release something like um, formaldehyde or, or aldehydes that can then come back and damage your own DNA. So this is something that happens inside of our body, even if you weren't exposed to anything, just by virtue of living. Um, but then there's also <laughs> stepping outside and inhaling um, factory smoke or just polluted um, air. Then there's exposing yourself to the sun. 
they're smoking cigarettes, um, all different forms of introducing either things into your body or to the surface of your skin that will then induce or form DNA damage in your cells. But you can tolerate, like I said, you can tolerate a certain amount um, if you have functioning DNA repair pathways, but unfortunately some people are born um, without functioning DNA repair pathways and those people are born with usually pretty um, severe diseases. So if you think of people that are like, like one, like they're described as being allergic to the sun, essentially like when they're out in the sun, their skin starts peeling right away. Those people are unable to repair certain types of DNA damage that their body forms after they've been exposed to sunlight. Um, there's people with um, growth deformities or immune deficiencies. Um, people that are really pre genetically predisposed to cancer, those are all things that happen when you are born with defective DNA repair. And so we actually, I'm not going to say that. I wasn't going to say what I'm not going to say. I'm just going to say. Is that good? Don't worry. I'll <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> no, that's actually interesting, though, in terms of that. Why, in terms of one, DNA breaks are happening all the time from inside and the outside. And yet our bodies are that tough to like repair and just adjust. And of yeah. course, over time we age and it's harder, but it kind of speaks to the beauty of our body. We're able to handle these things. And I'm so glad that you were able to talk about that with me. Cause one, I am not a DNA scientist, y'all. I am only, I work with proteins, enzymes, all the whole shebang. And yet it's wonderful to hear that these type of things, of course, relate to us in the molecular world, but they relate to us now just how we breathe, how we eat, what we're doing can all affect the amount of breaks that happen. But you are also, if you take care of yourself, if you take care of yourself, emphasis, you'll be able to repair and still be okay. So in addition to all of this, of course, your research focuses in on particularly the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you learning in your research right now, I guess? So you kind of brought up a thing mitochondria before, and if you didn't, this is your chance to. Um, <laughs> tell us about- super exciting. What you said? I said mitochondria is super exciting, so I'm about to get really excited right now. Okay, talk to me about it. What, okay, so we're what are you finding? What? What are you finding? Well, um, when you think of DNA in our cells, most people, when we took biology growing up, or just when we took biology or learning learn about um, the DNA in our cells, we learn about the DNA in our nucleus. Um, but what many people don't know until they reach these advanced biology classes or until they study biology a little bit more is that we have DNA inside of our mitochondria. And this DNA in our mitochondria is important because it um, codes for the machinery inside of our mitochondria. And so for in order for you to have intact functional mitochondria, you need intact functional mitochondrial DNA. Um, but this DNA is a lot smaller than, it's a lot less, the genome is smaller in size and it's just a smaller molecule than the DNA in our nucleus. So it's 16,000 16, base pairs in our mitochondria, mitochondrial genome compared to 3 billion base pairs in our nuclear genome. So it's a very small fraction of our DNA and mitochondria are small and the DNA is, um, the genome codes for like this distinct set of proteins. And so people, historically haven't really cared so much for mitochondrial DNA. They haven't cared so much to study um, mitochondrial repair mechanisms. But with time, we have started to find that mitochondria do in fact accumulate DNA damage because the mitochondria itself is a very oxidative in environment. Um, so there's lots of oxidative da damage happening to the mitochondrial DNA. Um, and um, where was I going? The mitochondria has DNA, the mitochondria can get damaged, and people used to think that the mitochondria didn't have any repair pathways, but we're finding now that the mitochondria do have repair pathways, but we don't know much about them. We basically know nothing. We know some. We only know very little bit about mitochondrial DNA repair, but there's so much to know still, especially because what has been found is that mitochondrial DNA has been associated with resistance to um, cancer treatments. So um, chemotherapeutics that involve um, using DNA damaging drugs. Um, there's been studies or observations that have been made that have linked mitochondrial DNA repair to the resistance to these drugs. Um, and also there is a theory of mitochondrial aging or the mitochondrial theory of aging. And that theory proposes that this accumulated mitochondrial DNA over time is 
what leads to the conditions that we associate with aging. So cancer and cardiovascular disease and neurodegenerative disease and just aging in general um, has been linked to damaged mitochondrial DNA. So if we want to understand how we age, we need to understand how our mitochondria repair or don't repair our DNA. And so the mitochondria are really exciting and really fun and you need to, I think they are a very important part of the cell to understand. And the DNA repair there is super mm -hmm. fascinating, but we don't know anything about it. And mitochondria are really hard to study because mitochondria are so small compared to the nucleus and there's so much less DNA. And that's been the struggle of my PhD. You hear that, y'all? Maram's trying to make us younger out here. We're not trying to age. We're just, we need to learn about mitochondria just because it's the powerhouse of the cell, but also it has everything else going on in what she just said. Oh my goodness. I I'm have excited. To plug the mutator mouse. Can I plug the mutator mouse? Can you what? Plug the mutator mouse. What's that? So there's a mouse that they made where they gave it a defective um, mitochondrial DNA polymerase. And just by doing that, they basically were made these mice that age super, super fast. So they age within weeks rather than within years. And like, if you look at this mouse compared to another mouse that doesn't have the defective polymerase, they like literally look like an old person. They're like an old mouse. They're like, they've got like the hunchback and they've got like these like a lot less fat on their body, but they also got these fat deposits and they develop these diseases um, that old people develop. And it's just, it's not cool. It's sad, but it's also cool. It's sad and cool. That's you need to me. send me this link. I'm going to put, send me the link or whatever the article was of that particular mouse. I'm going to put it in the actual description so people yeah. can check that out. Okay. Because that it. seems cool. It's cool. <laughs> yes. Now, one, I'm excited. This is actually pretty cool in terms of just look at Maram, what Maram is doing, everyone. This is actually important stuff that's happening. And not only that, she also does things outside the lab too. So mm. what you be doing outside the lab, Maram? Cause you're not, <laughs> like Maram is way more than just a scientist. She actually be doing a lot of other stuff. So you want to tell us what you be doing. Okay, well, I've been spending a lot of time in the lab these last few weeks, um, but I have still been making time for the most, my most favorite thing to do outside of the lab, which is my workouts. I like working out, it's fun. It's not as fun during COVID when I can only work out at home, but it's fine. Um, and lately I've been on this whole vaccine videos thing. And I've been trying to make videos to um, explain away some of the misinformation that we've been hearing about vaccines because I want people to get vaccinated so we can all be happy and healthy and end this pandemic. See, she keeps saving us everybody. Maram just be doing stuff. Also, she loves to work out to the point that she had to move this entire interview just a couple of minutes because she was finishing up her workouts. Yeah. And she's swole. Don't be miss don't if you ever meet her, she is swole. Not that that and she keeps waving at me in the hallway and I end up breaking something and she's all healthy. <laughs> so get me in shape. Well, everyone, this was a wonderful time. Maram, I thank you so much for even joining to do this. This was a wonderful thing. Yeah, um, before we go, me. huh? I, I thank you for inviting me. I had a lot of fun. Awesome. I, and I now, if you coffee, that's how much fun I had. Oh my, I feel so loved. That's amazing. <laughs> now, of course, if you're willing, share your social media and whatever you want to send your email instagram twitter so people can reach out if they want to see you you should definitely check out her COVID vaccine videos they're really cool so tell us where we should follow you find you all that jazz all right so my instagram where my vaccine videos are at are maram wazel so m a should i spell it out spell it out <laughs> okay m a r a m o i S E L L E E. That's my Instagram. And I've got those videos on my IGTV and on my reels. So please check those out um, and share them because I want people to see them because they won't help anyone if no one sees them. And I have my Twitter, which is M A R A M O C O L O G I S T. Maramacologist. It's like a play on pharmacologist, but with my name in it. Um, and I'm pretty sure if you just search my first and last name on Google, my Twitter comes up, which is not the best thing ever, but 
it's the easier way to find them probably awesome well everyone it's been a pleasure of course with you maram i hope everyone enjoyed today's installment of scientifically sound may your western blots never ever smile <laughs> let us make sure that we are set for the summer as well as get ready because one of us is going to be graduating and i hope that it's you <laughs> and then me i'm so happy that you came maram thank you so much Thank you for inviting me. I had a wonderful, wonderful Saturday morning with you. Bye. <laughs>Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to the episode with me and Marama Sawi. It was so much fun to record. Um, you may not know this, but I took a lot of her giggling out because that would have cut into time. But it was actually uplifting because when you have one of your own, one of your friends, one of your loved ones around just chatting it up about research or what have you, it's just a really fun time. If you want to follow us and join the fun with Scientifically Sound, you can follow us on Twitter at four, the number four, the sci underscore sound. And you can follow us on Instagram at scientifically sound. There's so much more fun that's coming out in terms of what's in store. I will still be telling stories. I will still have other people on. It's really a jam. So thank you for just participating. Um, rate, subscribe, share us with your friends, your loved ones, just to get your music and science and history fix in. Other than that, get some sunshine, but not too much sunshine. Bye.